Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the March 25th edition of Carolina Week. We'll tell you why Orange County has the lowest unemployment rate in the state. I'm Ayanna Allen, and I'll tell you what the walls of many Chapel Hill homes would say if they could talk. In sports, the women's basketball team is home for good. Will the men keep their tournament run alive? John Boyer will be here to tell us why it's so cold after spring has already sprung. All that in a Newt versus Obama, the Smackdown. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. For the first time in a long time, we're hearing some good news about the economy. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Edmonds. And I'm Carly Swain. The housing market is on the rise, but there are still a lot of people out of work. Although it's painful any time someone loses a job, Tamara Hill shows us why jobless numbers in Orange County are better than anywhere else in the state. Take a walk down Franklin Street and a few things are obvious. The shops here are a little more expensive and the UNC campus is buzzing quietly behind me. But these are clues as to why Orange County has the lowest unemployment rate in the state. I think it, UNC is, is a, great, a great company if you want to think of them as a company to have in Orange County. Klein is well aware that UNC Chapel Hill is the county's largest employer and many of the jobs it provides are secure. Professors for the university can rest assured that there will be new students every year. And although the construction across campus might be annoying, the 15 projects currently underway help to create many jobs. More importantly, the majority of jobs in the area pay well. Orange County has the second highest per capita income in the state. This helps to sustain the economy. People are more likely to keep buying during a time when most are trying to save. And the more people buy locally, the less likely Orange County is to see significant job loss. Also, population growth for Orange County is the lowest in the triangle, and this means there are fewer looking for jobs. Still, there are some in Orange County who are suffering. Hopefully, I will find something within the next few months, but I'm not extremely optimistic about that. And Klein isn't very optimistic about the upcoming months in Orange County either. It's possible that we could um, creep up to the national unemployment levels. Now to Ayanna Allen with the latest on Consumer Confidence. Even though the area's unemployment numbers are lower than many other North Carolina counties, the National Consumer Confidence number is its lowest ever. Real estate agent Barbara Guerra gives tours of Chapel Hill luxury homes every Sunday. Until recently, customers were hesitant to buy, leaving the hardwood floors empty. A lot of people were waiting to see what was going to happen in the economy with the change in government. The Consumer Confidence Index tracks large ticket purchases to predict whether the economy is going up or down. Last month, the index fell more than 12 points to the lowest point ever. The stimulus package, which was passed last month, includes a tax credit for first-time home buyers and a promise of more than 100,000 new jobs in the state. This can be one reason new and existing home sales went up in February. Managing broker in charge Fred Stevens is optimistic. And we have had a, uh, a definite uh, upswing in the number of people out looking. And in the past two weeks, the number of people actually purchasing homes. And uh, to the point that the last couple of weeks have resembled really years of the past. Many homes such as this one in the Chapel Hill area have seen an increase in traffic over the past month. Some believe it's because buyers who were initially weary of the economy have an increase in confidence and are ready to make large purchases. UNC economics professor Ralph Burns says that confidence is cyclical. I think that when people have confidence, as I said, it builds confidence. Uh, and so we wind up with a virtuous cycle of confidence. And Gara believes people are taking the right approach to rebuilding consumer confidence and ultimately the economy. I think people are being are doing their homework. I feel like they're going around, they're studying the market, they're trying to see what's out there. So I think people are shopping around, but I think that they are more serious and we're seeing more activity. Economists and realtors are optimistic about purchases in the coming months. And Tamara Hill and Ayanna Allen starting us off tonight. Thanks, ladies. Well, in this tough economy, students and parents are facing decisions about where to go to college and how to pay for it. The Daily Beast blog ranked UNC as number one in value, even above Ivy League schools. 
The report says that last year tuition and pri at private schools averaged $25,000 per year, while public schools averaged $6,500. Writer Kathleen Kingsbury points out that UNC's solid academic reputation and reasonably, reasonably priced tuition give us the best bang for our bucks. Men's basketball fans have had a lot to cheer for the past week. Here's one more reason to be proud. Forbes magazine reports that UNC Hoops is the most valuable team in the country for the second straight year, valued at almost $26 million. That's based on money con contributed to the universities and their economic impact on their communities. Also, UNC sold the most merchandise of any ACC school. Kentucky and Louisville placed second and third in value, and triangle rivals Duke and NC State came in at 8th and 18th, respectively. Governor Beverly Purdue's budget cuts could cause many North Carolina schools to cut teachers, but educators in our area aren't worried. Teachers at Chapel Hill High School aren't expecting the state's budget deficit to put their jobs in jeopardy. If Orange County schools are impacted by the budget cuts, students could experience bigger class sizes and fewer classes. As you can see, it doesn't look like there's enough room for any more seats. Governor Purdue hasn't applied for the $1.5 billion from the federal government to prevent teacher layoffs. While some students are happily paying for their final months of rent, others are scrambling to find off-campus housing for the fall. Many houses located just off-campus fill up one, sometimes two years in advance but those farther away are more available and often less expensive. Some students say that they were unaware of just how hard it is to find a house in Chapel Hill and said they would have started their searches earlier had they known. We thought we were starting earlier because we just didn't know any better. Um, and I guess if we had started in the fall semester, we would have not had to worry about places getting gone so quickly. Then. If you're still looking for a house rental for next fall, some places to check are in the newspaper on Craigslist with real estate agents or by simply knocking on the doors and or asking current tenants. If you feel like you're seeing more new faces around the Raleigh area recently, it's not just your imagination. Last week, the Census Bureau designated the raleigh Cary metro area the fastest growing area in the U.S. Raleigh and Cary saw a combined 47,000 people move to the region last year. One reason has been the area's ability to weather the economy. Cary is expected to end the fiscal year with an almost $3 million budget surplus and cut zero jobs. Other reasons for growth include local universities, the Research Triangle Park, and the climate. Cary is not the only area surviving this recession. Nadine Mazur tells us it's safe to say vacay is okay on the eastern shores of North Carolina. A local restaurant is relying on dough, tomato sauce, and cheese to see his business through the recession. Jeremiah Stewart says business is good at Slice Pizzeria because his pizza is cheap. This type of restaurant, um, you can feed a lot more, you know, get a lot more for your buck. Restaurants aren't the only business escaping some economic hardships. Marketing director for Sun Realty, Corey Davies, says despite tough times, people are booking house rentals. We're seeing a shift in what they're looking for. Davies says people are taking advantage of options like trip insurance, which does cover job layoffs. I think it's added benefit. She says they're also looking for multifamily beach homes, which helps reduce the cost per family. They're basically looking for any ways to cut costs. People aren't just changing the way they plan their vacation, but also changing the way they eat out. Instead of fine dining, they're opting for more cost-efficient ways to eat, like pizza. And that's helping owners like Slice Pizzeria turn dough into dough. And as the economy continues to ride along this bumpy roller coaster, one thing keeps Ryan Joyner coming back to the beach. There's a lot of fun stuff to do down here, so and it's not, you know, beach is free. But vacationing in the Outer Banks can still be expensive. And that's why the folks at Slice are trying to keep their pizzas affordable. Well, you're always worried when, when you're in this business and then you just you know, keep your fingers crossed and keep trying to you know, help, the, help the public out as much as you can and still, still be able to survive. And that's giving customers something to smile about. In the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I'm Nadine Mazur, Carolina Week. I think many people will sigh with relief to know that a vacation is still an option despite these tough times. You know, anytime the basketball team steps out on the court, there's a chance of someone getting injured. Yeah, but there's another group just off the court for whom the risk is even greater. We'll explain coming up.
trashy circle. The circle that helps this circle by recycling trash. We sort glass, plastic, separate cans, stack newspapers, and magazines. Now, thanks to us, there are lots of products made from things we've already recycled. This cereal box wants your Sunday paper. These paper clips, in a more daring life, a 56 convertible. The circle works like this. It starts when we recycle trash at home and at work. It's completed when we buy products made from or packaged in recycled materials. How do you know the difference? Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. It looks like this. Make a mental note. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. You'll save a tree, you'll save energy, and in your own way, you'll help save the world. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-2-RECYCLE for your free shopping guide. Environmental Defense. Finding the ways that work. Hey, kid, what's shaking? Besides me. <laughs> Dad! There's something wrong with the fridge! What? Ooh, a snack! <laughs> Got energy hogs in your house? Now you have the power to do something about them. Log on to energyhog.org. Because nobody likes an energy hog. Hey, they got Charlie! Eh, who cares? <laughs> the university is considering an, another way to remember former student body president Eve Carson. Today, the Buildings and Grounds Committee of the Board of Trustees met to discuss the concept for an Eve Marie Carson Garden. The location will, will be between the Campus Y and Haynes Hall. There is an existing walkway here and seating areas are in the plans. The board suggested the plants in the garden be evergreen so people can appreciate this more memorial space at all times of the year. Cheerleaders are as much of a part of March Madness as the players. And like the players, cheerleaders risk injury every game. Medical reporter Jeff Yo has more. UNC senior Rachel Ecatelli has been cheerleading since she was a kid. She remembers spraining her elbow two years ago. We were just at practice stunting and I kind of fell wrong and you're not supposed to put your arm out when you fall, but I did. Ecatelli says she's more fortunate than some. Earlier this year, a security officer accidentally bumped into a UNC cheerleader performing a backflip. The cheerleader hit her head and needed stitches. Sports injury researcher Jonna Mahalik says cheerleaders are at great risk. There's actually a higher rate of catastrophic injuries in cheerleading than there is football. A report released by the National Center for Catastrophic Sports Injury last August found 26 severe injuries suffered by cheerleaders in the past 25 years. Cheerleading accounted for two-thirds of sports injuries among college women, with sprains, fractures, cuts and bruises being the most common. UNC cheerleading coach Brown Walters says he's aware of the dangers. You won't see us throw basket tosses and two and a half high pyramids at football games. Keeping his cheerleaders injury free is a big priority for the coach. I want them to be able to lift their kids one day when they get out of here and not be beat up and bruised by the time they leave here. Akitali's not beat up and didn't let her elbow sprain slow her down. If it would have been this year, my senior year, I would have been a lot more upset probably, but I only missed two basketball games, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Since then, she's caught the eye of Sports Illustrated, which featured her as cheerleader of the week in a recent article. Barring any injuries, she'll be in Memphis Friday cheering on the Tar Heels. In Chapel Hill, I'm Jeff Yo, Carolina Week. And it sounds like those cheerleaders would probably be willing to accept a few bumps and bruises if it would help the Heels survive and advance to the tournament. It might be hard to believe, but the city of Chapel Hill is loosening the reins on parking enforcement. The town council has agreed to excuse one parking ticket per driver per year in hopes of encouraging drivers who think parking is a hassle to make the commute into town. This change was part of a long list recommended by the downtown partnership to improve parking and boost the city's economy. However, don't get too eager to park illegal out, illegally outside the library or in Stadium Drive because the new ordinance applies only to areas outside of the university property. And you know, I would have sacrificed a parking ticket today because it was cold and rainy. It was, and weathercaster John Boy is here to let us know mm -hmm. if it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I wasn't lucky enough to have a parking spot close today, but uh, one thing I can tell you, maybe you're headed out for a bite to eat. You're wondering, you know, when is it going to get warmer? When is the rain going to stop? We'll have the answers for you after the break. When it comes to babies, 
appearances can be deceiving. Look at this brainwave. Very active. And this one, not doing much. You make the difference by reading, singing, and talking from birth. Studies prove it. An early start. Now that's smart. The fish at Lake Crabtree and Briar Creek contain PCB chemicals that are very dangerous to your health. So catch and release every time you fish. For more information, call 919-707-5900 or check the webpage. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Sally's having some behavioral problems. I guess that reward system isn't working. Well, the timeouts weren't either. Well, you're just too lenient. Well, you're too strict. No, you are. Oh, you are. Where can adults go for ideas when they feel as frustrated as kids? Connectforkids.org, guidance for grown-ups. Hey, welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm John Boyer, and I thought we'd start out by taking a sports approach to weather. I have my top-seeded rain beating out sun for the weekend tournament, and I also have a warm beating out the cool temperatures and maybe a uh, last-minute uh, wild-card play-in from some storms on Saturday. But all joking aside, let's start out by taking a look at the uh, current surface map. You see the rain where it is uh, just a few moments ago. It's actually moved into the triangle, as you now know and uh, causing some rainy conditions, and that's rain that's extending all the way from South Carolina up to Ohio and Pennsylvania. Now, this is a stationary front boundary, but it's actually going to start moving. On this side of it, we have a high-pressure area with uh, oceanic air. It's got a clockwise flow, so that air is bringing in cold air, and uh, that's why it felt so cold outside today. But as this moves in, this stationary front, it's moving overnight. It'll actually raise our temperatures overnight. We'll be on this side of it, and that's where there's some warmer air, warm enough to spark off some thunderstorms. Now, the national map shows us where those storms are down in uh, Texas right now. Uh, they're uh, watching out for some tornadoes, actually, in some parts of Texas. A lot of rain, and most of this rain is in association with a low, uh, a low pressure area that's right over Tennessee right now. The current surface map shows us that. And as we move through into the day on Thursday, that low with most of the rain on it is going to be on top of us, bringing us most of the rain during the day tomorrow. Then on the day Friday, that's slowly working its way out. We still have the chance for some heavier rain during the afternoon on Friday. Now this cold front back here, that's going to start kicking off some storms Friday night in Memphis, Tennessee. It's also going to be swinging through the south during the day on Saturday, and that's what will bring us some storms on Saturday afternoon. Now, let's say you are headed to the game, lucky enough to do that, or you're just uh, uh, wishing for the best for the people that are out there in Memphis, Tennessee. They'll have some thunderstorms to deal with, maybe strong or severe. So watch out for that if you're out there. Tailgate temperature 70 degrees in Memphis and uh, cooling down to about 60 for the victory party, maybe midnight 1 a.m. Now maybe you're uh, traveling back from Memphis or you're traveling somewhere else during the day on Saturday. We have temperatures uh, in the mid-60s, upper 70s through the south with the chance of some thunderstorms in Charlotte and Atlanta. Or maybe you're uh, going to stay on the east coast uh, headed up to D.C. or JFK, uh, New York Airport. Temperatures in the mid-50s and just uh, drizzly and dreary, not very pleasant. So our planner for the day tomorrow and the night tonight shows us those temperatures. Midnight, 51 degrees, actually climbing through the overnight period, 58 by the time we get to noon, 61 for tomorrow afternoon. But look at that, raining the whole time pretty much. It's almost going to be nonstop. Now, our four-day planner shows us we have temperatures 61, gradually warming up to 71 during the day on Saturday. Widespread uh, rain for the day on Thursday, a little less widespread, mostly just in the afternoon during the day on Friday. Now, those storms on Saturday could be strong or severe during the evening, but before that, mainly just scattered showers and thunderstorms. And then we start to clear out during the day on Sunday and for the week ahead. Well, I can't wait to turn my heat off and finally get some air conditioning. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, it might not be warm enough for that, but... Mm, might well. as well uh, just wait for it, I guess. Thank you, John. All right, thanks. One of Chapel Hill's Pooch Playgrounds has a brand new look. Tuesday, workers turned away pups and their people from the Southern Community Dog Park. Construction workers expanded the sidewalk and laid new concrete entrances. Chapel Hill dogs can still socialize at another park off of Homestead Road. The parks offer a legal and safe area for dogs to be off their leashes and dog lovers to connect. The Southern Community Park is expected to be fully reopened on Thursday.
and we've got Thursday taken care of, but Friday is the big game in Chapel Hill. That's right, and Jason Kahn's yeah. here to give us a preview of that big game. Jason? Absolutely. You're speaking of dogs just now. We're playing the Gonzaga Bulldogs on Friday. What a coincidence, and we're going for an NCAA, NCAA record 99th tournament win. Wow. Coming up in sports, nothing, in else, nothing else in life matters very much, trust me, because we're about to bring you Carolina basketball. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? <laughs> no. They go on Everyday my moments head. can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. These kids are in trouble. They're not getting high on drugs or stealing. If they were, you'd do something about it right now. But why is it almost half of all parents who suspect their child has a problem learning wait a year or more before getting help? Why? Kids with learning disabilities are smart. They just learn differently. Call now. The sooner you get help, the better the chance your kid has. what a 10% weight loss can do for you. Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Jason Kahn. After a first round defeat of Central Florida, the women's basketball team took on 12th seeded, 6th seeded, excuse me, Purdue Monday night. The heels were in for a fight and Italy Lucas came out swinging, scoring on this layup off a of Purdue turnover. Now later, the heels tried to get their transition game going and find Lucas waiting on the wing to knock down three more of her team high 25 points. However, Lucas was one of the few bright spots as Tara de Graf and Reed and Rashawn McCants went a combined five for 25 from the floor. The Boilermakers proved to be too tough, shooting 69% from the floor in the second half, sending coach Sylvia Hatchell and the heels home before the Sweet 16 for the first time in five years. Final score, 85 to 70. The men's basketball team is heading to the Sweet 16 for the third year in a row. The trip might be nothing new, but their opponent is. Take a look at what the heels are up against. I know he scared him to death and me in the first half when in his own terms he heard the pop. Coach Roy Williams hopes Ty Lawson rests his toe before the heels face number four seed Gonzaga. Lawson appears back to form, raking in 21 points in the second half against LSU. Williams says Lawson's focus makes him dangerous. The adrenaline of the game has a lot to do with it. You lose yourself in the game, which I wish we would do all the time. The Tar Heels are shooting 49% in the tournament. The team is 40% from long distance. But the Heels will have to rely on their defense against a sharp shooting team like the Bulldogs. Williams tries to avoid looking at the Bulldog stats. You look at those things and you start trying to find <coughs> something else to look at because those things make you sick. On Tuesday, the Diamond Heels headed to UNC Wilmington to take on the Seahawks. Levi Michael hit his ninth homer of the season. That leads the ACC. This game marked the 12th in Kyle Seeger's hitting streak. The Heels win 8-1. Now today at the Bosch, the Heels are taking on Charlotte sophomore Ryan Leach. Ryan Leach started on the hill, and in the fourth inning, the Heels are trailing the 49ers 1-0. Sean Moran came in relief for Leach and so far has picked up three strikeouts. The 18th ranked softball team took on number 13 Ohio State yesterday. Danielle Spaulding got the start for the Heels, and it was a pitcher's duel early. Here, Kim Reeder gets one of her three strikeouts, and Brianna Brown is thrown out trying to steal second. But in the bottom of the third, Constance Orr going, beating out this infield single. Get it! Then Christine Canaro loaded the bases, allowing Orr to score off a Buckeye throwing error. Lisa Norris took them out in the fourth, and the one run was all the cushion she needed as UNC won one to nothing. Not all athletes at UNC are on a varsity team. Kelly Davies introduces us to a student with one crazy talent 
on one wheel. Mullen looks like an ordinary student. But there are several things that make him extraordinary. Kevin is a senior getting ready to graduate in May with a resume full of amazing experiences. He's one of 180 Moorhead scholars. He's one of 50 international students. He's one of 27 UNC ice hockey players. And he's one of seven street unicycling masterminds in the world. McMullen began unicycling in 2000 and has pioneered the extreme sport. Unicycling is cool just because it's different and it's so simple. You just have a wheel and a seat and some pedals and there's no chain. There's not so much to break and it's really cool what you can do with such a simple machine. He spent the past summer working on a documentary displaying the skills and techniques that he's created. For unicycling, I've been to New Zealand, Colombia, Germany, France, Spain, all over the Canada and US, uh, Denmark, Sweden. You won't see me get on this thing, but wait till you see what McMullen can do at the helm. Unicycling for me has just been a good way to express myself and set myself apart and um, just a great way to travel the world and meet new people. Unicycling might not be hugely popular in the U.S., but trust me, it isn't for the faint at heart. In Chapel Hill, I'm Kelly Davies, Carolina Week. Kelly's right, what an extraordinary student. You know what, I hope we, we're that extraordinary in, in the NCAA tournament on Friday. Exactly, thanks Jason. Here in Chapel Hill, it's a tough call to pick a favorite between President Barack Obama and American Idol contestant Anoop Desai. Or is it? We'll show you what you said. A glass bottle saves enough energy to run the TV you're watching for one full hour. Recycle. It's the everyday way to save the world. Making a can from recycled aluminum instead of from raw materials reduces air pollution by 95%. Recycle, it's the everyday way to save the world. Recycling all our Sunday papers would save over half a million trees a week. Recycle, it's the everyday way to save the world. If you have a story idea, contact Carolina Week at 843-8292. You can also visit us online at carolinaweek.org. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599. We know it's important to hear from the president. Yeah, but who would you really rather watch, Obama or a noop? And good evening from Fox News headquarters in New York. I'm Shepard Smith, American Idol postponed until tomorrow at this same time on Fox. Baby, I didn't treat you. Here's the president. Good evening. <coughs> Honestly, a noob, because I feel like Obama keeps saying the same things. I'm kind of bored, and I'll hear some good music. Undoubtedly, President Obama's speech on the economy. Give me one more chance. To keep you satisfied. Ah, I love Obama, but I need my singing, you know? You were always <laughs> Definitely Obama President chat. Obama. Important to remember that chat. this crisis didn't happen overnight, and it didn't result from any one action or decision. Frankly, I would have rather watched Obama. Did you? I did not. It took many years and many failures to lead us here. I would rather watch a noob but I should have watched Obama. A noob. <laughs> um. PC, Obama, reality, a noob. And Anoop certainly is the uh, American Idol around here at Carolina, and he's uh, fighting for a championship just like our uh, Roy's boys. But, you know, Carolina Week handled a championship this past weekend. We flew out to L.A. to pick up our first place Emmy from the Academy uh, of Television Arts and Science Foundation. And isn't it so pretty, too? Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.